I say, if you can't help somebody, keep your mouth shut. Somebody's ch children are going astray. Okay, can you help them? Please help them. Or pray for them. Otherwise, just to criticize them and say, look at these parents, how bad they are. How does it help that poor boy? And how does it help the parents? That's not challenging or encouraging or building up. It's tearing down and discouraging and doing everything opposite of what the Bible says. That's against the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit challenges, encourages, and builds up. But we are discouraging and tearing them down. Do you know that many believers are fighting against the Holy Spirit in their life? And they wonder, why is my life not more victorious? I'll tell you, because you're fighting against the Holy Spirit in other areas. Those who pursue righteousness the most are the ones very often who are most unmerciful. If you went to Israel in the days of Jesus, the people who, were, who thought they were the most holy were the Pharisees. And they were very upright in many areas. They were very exact in paying the tithe and keeping the law and all that. But they were the ones who condemned others the most. Let's not be like that. Let's have that balance of truth plus grace. Of severity plus goodness. And you've often heard me quote this verse. The balance there is in God that we need to have in Isaiah 61. Let me repeat it for those who have forgotten or those who have never heard it. Isaiah 61. And speaking about Jesus, because Jesus quoted this verse in Luke 4, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. The word of God, the gospel is always good news. The word gospel means good news. We should never go with bad news from the Bible. The Bible is full of good news. To those who are afflicted, to bind up the brokenhearted. What a tremendous passage this is. If you really want to be anointed with the Holy Spirit, follow this. Lord, anoint me, not to speak in tongues, but to bring good news to the afflicted people around me, to bind up those who are brokenhearted around me, to proclaim liberty to somebody here who is in bondage to something, and to proclaim freedom to those who are in a prison here. There are invisible prisons in which people are sitting. Set them free. And then, verse 2, to proclaim the favorable year of our Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. There is a day of judgment. But notice this, verse 2, 365, years of, 365 days of favor and one day of judgment. That's the proportion. With God, verse 2, that is 365 days of favor and one day of judgment. I say, Lord, I want to have that proportion. I don't want zero day of judgment. There has to be judgment against sin, sure. I must be strict, even with my children. But it must be 365 to 1, not 50-50. No, some people think 50-50. 50% pay grace and 50% judgment. No. 365 to 1. That's what it says here. And that's the proportion we must have. And I believe if we go this way, we'll find ourselves making tremendous spiritual progress in our own life, being free from condemnation, and being merciful to others, and delivering other people from the prisons they are in, lifting up the depressed. And there are many people sitting here who are probably need a word of encouragement. I love that beautiful passage in Luke where it says, Peter was in the courtyard and Jesus was in the court being judged, judged by the high priest and all the others. And Peter denied the Lord three times. And the cock crew. And it says there in Luke, Jesus turned and looked at Peter. It's a beautiful word. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Now the question is, what was he saying with that look? You know, sometimes you can say something with a look. You know that. The way you look can be a stern look or an encouraging look. What was Jesus saying to Peter with that look? Was he saying, I told you you would do this? No. 
I think that look was saying, it's all right, Peter. Just con confess it, I forgive you, let's move on. Let's move on, I've got a plan for your life. That's why he went out and wept bitterly and became the great apostle that he became because the Lord encouraged him. And I want to say, my brothers and sisters, there may be somebody waiting for a look like that from you. Maybe your husband or a wife, when they do something wrong, when they slip up. How do you look? Ah, oh, there you went and messed up that again. I hope that look will never be in our face. Because God never looks at us like that. Does, do you ever think God is looking at you saying, Ah, oh, there you went and messed up there again. Never. Let's have a look which says, it's okay. Let's fix it. Something got broken, it's all right. It's not, the world has not collapsed because of that. It's not serious. The only thing serious is sin. And that also you can confess and forsake it. Dear brother, sister, be a person like that from today onwards and people will want to come and talk to you. People will want to come and meet you. Because they realize that every time they meet you, they are encouraged. Imagine if all of us become like that. What a church this will become. We're not lowering the standard of sin. But we are balancing that strictness against sin with 365 days of favor. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, please help us to understand your mercy more. To understand your kindness, your goodness, and your long suffering. How your mercies are new every morning. Help us to also have mercies that are new every morning to people who have failed. As you have been merciful to us. Help us to be free from condemnation 100%. And not to condemn others, but to lift them up. Thank you. In Jesus' name.